Hey guys, Enter the Stars, it's Friday, and it's really by the grace of God today that we're even able to go live, because last night we caught a strike. Now, many of you heard this, I put it in the Telegram group, and uh, I think the Facebook page, and I tried to leave a few messages here in the chats, but basically, we caught a strike last night on the video that we posted right at the very beginnings of Omicron. And it was a Lancet article I was reading, and I'm not going to repeat the subject matter of the article, but basically uh, I was reading a mainstream article that had not even been fact-checked, and so at that point I felt the, the article was safe to read. Well, and here they come, you know, uh, what is it, what are we, four or five months into Omicron, and they're going back, looking at videos from way back then to try to catch people in strikes. Anyway, I appealed it. And I very carefully, it took me like 30 minutes to an hour to write an appeal letter to YouTube, basically saying it was a mistake. And here's what I'm learning about appeals. If any of you have uh, YouTube channels, I know Seven Grains comes to the channel. Uh, she's a relatively large channel. Um, Uncle Paranoia, I think, has a channel. And if I missed your, your name, please forgive me. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you do catch strikes, they can be appealed and reversed. And, but you have to uh, very carefully timestamp uh, each part of the video that you think it could, you know, you could have gotten a strike from. Um, that's what I did. So I basically rewatched the entire thing. They let you review the strike video. And I put like six or seven timestamps in there of where I thought that they might have thought that I was saying something against their narrative. You got to be very careful, you know, because you can have an opinion about this stuff, but you can't make statements that say this or that. Uh, against their agenda. And so we really are walking a fine line, aren't we? So that's just a little bit of advice. Take your time, write the timestamp, an explanation, send it back. And I've had probably 10% of my strikes uh, reverse, maybe 20%, almost a quarter of them. Most of the time though, they don't, they don't give you a chance to, you know, they don't give you a chance. So here's the new rule at YouTube. If you do catch a strike, and this is, again, more advice for those of you that have channels, you are not allowed to post for an entire week anywhere on YouTube, even if you have multiple accounts. And we used to do this often. We would catch a strike and be kicked off one channel, and we would just go to the backup channel, right? Well, now YouTube is not allowing that. If you go to your backup channel and post, they will actually more aggressively go after all of your accounts. They will eliminate all of them. and your all your Google products. So you basically get kicked out of Google's world if you try that. So if you don't see me for a week, uh, probably got another strike. Okay. But we will be back on here after that. So let's get into today's show. Uh, so we've got a double header today. You know, the first part of today's show will be on Miss Congeniality, the movie. And we did a trailer I uploaded a couple days ago. And it was about the model, Chesley Christ, who jumped out of a window. And a few of you had a, a, you know, a hard time understanding that trailer. Um, there was no commentary in the trailer. It was only a couple minutes long. So we're going to break that down today. Let's see what I have pulled up. Okay, so here's, our, here's the video here, uh, the trailer. And we'll play that and just break it down very slowly. And then the second part of today's show will be... A link that one of you sent me uh, in artificial intelligence that generated tarot cards. Weird, right? So we're going to look at some of those tarot cards through spiritual eyes that were generated by an artificial intelligence to see what the enemy is cooking up next. So let's get back to Miss Congeniality. So what was this all about? Well, this model jumped out of a building just a couple days ago and we're going to see how that fits into this 2000 film Miss Congeniality. Now why would the two be connected? Well you're going to see in a minute here. So if you haven't heard yet there was this model Chesley Christ former Miss USA she jumped out of a window to her death or so we're told and she was the oldest Miss USA winner and the longest running uh, Miss USA because of the spamdemic. So they weren't able to 
hold another, you know, pageant. And so she just retained the title and it ended up being 557 days and her reign ended on 11-9. Now, we talked about the significance of these numbers and how they seemed to encode Jive G mind control because 19 times 3 is 57. So the numbers 19 and 57 are very closely linked to one another. So it just so happened that Christ ran for 557 days and her reign ended on 11, 9, or 19. So this wasn't an accident. And that was our first clue that there was much more to see here. Now, what does Chris have to do with this movie, Miss Congeniality, with Sandra Bullock in it? Well, Chris just so happened to challenge, or not challenge, but channel Miss Congeniality when she wore the same dress that Bullock did in the movie during her Miss Universe competition. Let's play a little bit of this here. So there is Chris on the left channeling, uh, you know, the Miss Congeniality, the article says. And as you can see visually, she did a little bit different colors, but you get the drift. Let's keep watching here. Now, my belief is, is that the moment that she put this dress on, she was already dead. And I'll tell you why. The element of... Jumping from elevated heights was a central theme in the film, Miss Congeniality. Now, how can that be? How can a movie that's 21 years old have anything to do with somebody that died now? Well, this is where we get into mind control and MK Ultra, And I'm starting to wonder, was Chris mind controlled to jump from this building? Was there some kind of signal that went out? A jive G signal well that's what we're going to go over today now i did a little bit of math because i wanted to see if there was any connection between this film and its release date and the release date of or not the release date or well she, i guess she did get released from this reality christ's death and her fall from from the building so i plugged in the numbers so release date of miss congeniality 12 22 2000 the date of Chris' death, 130-22. And look at what we have here. 666,000 seconds. There's a 57 in there for good measure. And a 1119. So here we have all of the numbers associated with this woman's life. Separating, separating the two dates from the film and her death. Perfect match. Um, 557 days was her reign, ended on 11-9. Now, for those of you that don't know, with numbers, you always drop the zeros. So if you're a little bit confused, going, that doesn't say that, Casey, then that's what's going on with that. Lots of 79s, too. 7,709 days. And so that's what's going on with that. Now, let's get into this costume because this costume seems to also hold some secrets and symbolism, doesn't it? Grist claimed that the dress was inspired by the Apollyonic. I put that part in because Lady Soul Invictus is very Apollyonic, isn't she? Soul Invictus, statue of Liberty, S-O-L. That's what it was all along. And it wasn't until relatively recently that people had discovered that. that this was all about Sol Invictus, known as the androgynous one, wasn't she or he. And we know that that is likely the representation of the adversary himself, the androgynous one. Now, Chris claims that the dress was also inspired by Rosie the Riveter, and Lady Justice. And in this picture, she's actually holding the scales of justice. But I believe that 
the central look, the central theme of this look of this of this costume here is that of Lady Liberty. And not only is it Lady Liberty, it's Lady Liberty and how she appeared when she first arrived to America. Copper or bronze is what Liberty was made up of. So she looked much like this. But then over time through oxidation, she turned green, the green patina. So you've got a beginning and an end. And her beginning ended up being her end and her end, her beginning. So you have a spiritual or a Boris going on here. Now, there were other women who also channeled or other individuals, I should say, who also channeled Lady Liberty and the fall of liberty. Because that's what this is really about, isn't it? This is the fall of liberty. This is what's being channeled here. And many of you will remember Wendy Williams. She donned the Liberty costume in green and had a tumble, fainted, and had a crazy look on her face like she just saw the devil himself. Now I call Wendy Williams, I call her Wonder Woman. Because you have to wonder, don't you? Now, there is much more to Wonder Woman than meets the eye. And we're going to break this down for you. This might be new information for many of you. But I went on a rabbit hole journey about Wonder Woman and what it really means. The Wonder Woman logo. Here it is right here. It's a visual representation of the sulfur molecule. Let's take a look here. Here's a newer Wonder Woman logo. Here are some of the other Wonder Woman logos from older vintage times. And here is the sulfur-8 molecule. A W within a W, also known as a crown. So, what's so special about the sulfur molecule? The W within a W, the Wonder Woman logo. Well, it is referred to as an anti-prism. It, it holds the shape of an anti-prism, which just so happens to be the description of the shape of the One World Trade Center. As you can see here, square anti-prism. W within a W, visually. Now, are you starting to see with spiritual eyes yet? Because this goes even deeper. Now, there are certain discussions regarding these individuals, Bullock, Williams, and Christ, that have to remain unspoken on this channel. And I, I see all of your comments in the comment section, but understand that this could be a giant honey trap. They're already reviewing our comments to see, uh, you know, and sending us emails saying that they, one of our comments was reported as troubling. This is a setup, you guys. I would hate to see three quarters of you get wiped off of Google's account because of our questions about an individual's makeup, we have to say. So don't fall into the trap. Anytime you see something just being repeated over and over and over and over again, you've basically, sorry to say, have fallen under some kind of mind control. Something is making you want to focus on that. It's kind of like uh, the shape of the earth thing. And this is why I don't really allow discussions because what happens is you get in this debate and it ends up basically possessing the stream. And it's all anyone wants to talk about. And that's that's of the enemy. I have my beliefs about the plane of the earth, but I don't want it to be the central part of every discussion on everything we talk about. So when people go overboard with this whole uh, makeup of people, it tells me that it's some kind of, there's some other spirit at play here, okay? And I would hate to see all of us get kicked off for insensitivity or whatever they want to label it. You know, they'll just say it's bigotry or insensitivity. So we got to be very careful. Remember, we're supposed to be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. Okay. Now, but we can say certain things about this. And I just showed you that the sulfur molecule is a W within a W, Wonder Woman, because it's a wonder and you have to wonder. And look what, what I found with a little tiny bit of research. Sulfur could have an impact on the package of men. 
In other words, it makes a man not so much a man. Now, there are other studies out here. That, I mean, I've probably opened up a can of worms here. But there are many other studies out there that talk about sulfur's impact on the androgens. That's all you got to do is look up androgens and sulfur, and you'll see that there's a definitive link that seems to possibly explain the spiritual symbolism behind what you guys have been talking about so much in the comments section. Now, we'll leave the discussion at that. And that brings us to the film Miss Congeniality. Where'd it go? Here it is. And we're going to look at these different clips. Now, I stylized the title of today's show to emphasize the word gene, G-E-N-E, -E, in the word miscongeniality, because this is all about the genes, isn't it? So based on everything we just covered, you can see how the word genes fits into all of this. Now, let's break down some of these scenes so you can see, uh, so you can see some of this play out here. Miss United States preliminary, the contestant from New Jersey, left off stage. Left off stage. So, Sandra Bullock is an undercover cop who joins a beauty pageant to try to catch some bad guys. That's basically the theme of it. And she thought she saw one of the bad guys while she was up on stage with her ring of flowers in her hair. She thought she, she was up on stage and she saw the guy in the audience that she thought was going to like try to hurt somebody. And so she jumped off the stage. Now, if this was the only jumping scene or reference to jumping in the film, I would not be doing a video on this. So please understand that. There, I'm going to show you several other references here. Now, let's keep going. It tackled a man in the crowd who was just trying to light a cigarette. Ah, yes. Stan told me that she got a letter like a few weeks back from the network, and they're firing her too. She threw a chair out the window. <laughs> she threw a chair out the window. <laughs> So, references of things being thrown out of windows, uh, you really can't make this up. Now, I did have one person, you know, there are always a few, and they said something like, these kinds of decodes are the ones that make me doubt the rest of your decodes. Well, if, if that's the case, it's because you haven't seen too many of these decodes before, because the patterns are persistent. It's not just one coincidence, set of coincidences, just like you would never deny that you know, uh, the Simpsons, uh, that there's something weird going on, that they keep predicting all this stuff. Of course, there's a pre-programming. Now, I don't know how they do it, but they're doing it, don't they? Let's keep watching this. Tell me exactly what were you thinking when you jumped off the stage? She's her name. She's here with me right now. Tell me exactly what were you thinking when you jumped off the stage? So, uh, how's it feel? Throwing the old rule book out of the window, huh? Pretty good, actually. Yeah. Throwing the old rule book out of the window, huh? So, two references to throwing things out of window. One was a chair and another the rule book. Now, how can this be happening? Well, I believe what this is is a ritual. It's a falling ritual. Now, let's break down the falling ritual. Why falling? Why would that be something that these people would be obsessed with? Well, to me, this is obvious that it's about falling stars and falling angels. Uh, not too long ago, probably, well, it was about two years ago, we took a look at the Walk of Fame in Hollywood. And when I basically zoomed out from Google Earth, I realized that the Walk of Fame was actually orientated in the shape of a cross, Hollywood and Vine. The two streets cross each other, and it literally forms a crucifix. And then I began to look closely at the buildings. You could almost make out the shape of a crucified Jesus. Now, the vine part is, I believe, near the top. That would be the crown of thorns, the thorny vine. And then there was the Church of Scientology right there, which is the false Christ worship, right? There's more. These stars, fallen stars, and embedded in concrete, which is their prison, locked down here because they've made their choice, didn't they? 
the concrete prison, the fallen star, permanently embedded in the concrete. A ritual choice publicly displayed. So, the, there is a spiritual realm and there is spiritual symbolism for those with eyes to see. Let's keep watching this and we'll talk a little bit more about this. Do not mess with the dress. Ah! Another falling reference. He pulls her into the pool. Now here's where things get really spooky. Because this goes even a level deeper. Because these are ritually influencing the fall of future people is what I believe we're seeing here. It's a ritual influence. Or at least they want us to have the impression that, that it's a ritual influence so that they can, if they decide they want to throw somebody out the window, then this ritual will scoop that up in terms of spiritual meaning. So he pulls her into the pool and he says, You big trouble. Why you fell? You actually... Big trouble. What? You big trouble. Why you fell? Why you fell. Now you see on the front of the pool here, why you fell? You actually... Big trouble. There is the release date of the film and the number of days between this date and her death, 39 days, which just so happens to be the number of days between the release date of the movie and the death of Chris 21 years later. And it's also on the pool. Now, if you think this is all hogwash, understand that this isn't the first time we've looked at dates of films and compared them to dates of the actors in them. We've done this thousands of times over the last 10 years. And there always, always seems to be some type of tangible meaning to the relationship between the dates. It's almost every time when we look at significant films, who's cast in them, their birthdays, what the birthdays mean how their birthdays relate to other film release dates. And the theme, the actual theme, comparing the theme of the film that they starred in to their birth date and the significance of that. It's almost as if uh, we discovered a glimpse into the spiritual reality that governs this tree of good and evil. Now, let's keep watching. There it is, 39 days, 3 feet, 0.9 meters. Now you hardly ever see this in a swimming pool. You don't see the feet and meters together like this. So this was done unintentionally. The fact that this, she jumped right from the top of where it said that. She didn't jump over here to the right of it or in between the number and another number. It was right over this one. Now notice the water theme. This is dark baptism. Okay. Dark baptism. We've seen it many, many times before. There's a lot of channels that have covered these ritual baptisms and tubs and things. And it's a dark baptism. So this pretty much concludes our uh, analysis of the fall of miscongeniality. And now I want to get over. And let's let this play out first. So now I want to talk about something, another thing you guys sent me. You guys sent me so much stuff. And so basically, we're going to talk about these, this guy who basically plugged in some data into an artificial intelligence and out came tarot cards. Not just one or two tarot cards, dozens of tarot cards. And those are the images we're going to look at next that were generated by the AI. We're going to try to break them down, see if we could see any encoding or symbolism in them. And But before we do that, let's read the background story on these tarot cards. Let's see, where is it here? Here it is. And see what it's all about. Thanks for the new channel member. That is Zen Wen. Thanks, Zen Wen. All right, let's go in here. 
or they go, oh, here. Now, let's read this background story. It says, now this is Earth Chronicles of Life, International News, uh, January 31st, 2022. So this is recent. The Swedish musician and AI enthusiast known as Super Composite used an AI to create hundreds of creepy new tarot cards and has been blasting them on Twitter for days in a delightful barrage of occult flavored machine learning. The artist is using an AI called Looking Glass. So now we're starting to figure out what's going on here. This whole, you know, uh, portal through the spiritual realm, the upside down, the reflection, the man in the mirror. It's all the same thing. Time machines. Copper always plays a role in this as well, right? And so the AI is called Looking Glass, which debuted last year and was made by Twitter user AI Curio. Some cards have humanoid characters with holes for faces. Some feature monstrous looking creatures in bloody shades of red. And some are creepy simply because they seem uncannily like tarot cards at first glance. The cards don't exist in real life, but Super Composite has been naming each of them and curating the best results in a long Twitter thread that started earlier this month. Now, I've seen about three of these images, but I wanted to decode these live, the rest of them, with you guys so we can all see what's really going on here. So let's keep reading here. It seems the artist is simply trying to decipher what might appear in each of the cards. Although the haunting images aren't perfect recreations of any one object and could be interpreted in many ways. I generated 500 of these and I'm not stopping, Super Composite said. I'll post the best in this thread and I curate them over time. Take this amazing entry dubbed the King of Bones. Twitter fans seem stoked about the novel cards weighing in on their potential spiritual applications. Wow. So let's take a look at some of these now. Full armor. Because, you know, this isn't the kind of thing that you want to try to look at to predict anything. Obviously, I have to give that, you know prerequisite speech there because you know we do have people that are into mysticism and all that there are a few of you that come to this channel and i would encourage you that this is not the way obviously um and the, all we're doing here is looking and seeing what the enemy is up to now this image here this first image to me appears to have some kind of like needle going through the top of his head okay and this uh, is a letter O, but obviously it could also be a Q with this with the Q coming down here. So that's kind of weird. Let's look at some of these other here. Now this one's creepy. This is like Slender Man or something. Now I believe these come right out of the demonic realm. So you don't want to spend too much time sitting and obsessing over stuff. You don't want to print these out and have them in your house and stuff like that. We're just simply looking this at this for spiritual value. How many of these are on here? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of these uh, these vertical posts going up. It's almost look like crucifixion posts without the cross member, with like serpents crawling up and around it. Just creepy. Something you see out of a horror movie. Here's another creepy one. This almost looks like a, a snake, the head of a snake at the center of this, doesn't it? Notice how everything serpentine. Gives you a clue as to what they're up to. It's all about the serpent. And he's the one that rules the artificial intelligences. Okay. Even the type is not very real. It's like some kind of new language. To me that says uh, maybe divine or something. Could possibly be. But look at this long crazy looking robe. It almost looks something like a, it looks a little bit Catholic to me almost. This looks like almost like a, the hand was severed maybe. And this one's covered in some kind of a sock. Very weird. Here's another strange one. This almost appears to be a bat made out of flesh. You can see the head here in the middle. Looks like two hearts or livers. This looks like it could be Roman numeral uh, 7, maybe. And notice the mirroring effect, okay? All of these have 
uh, symmetry, don't they? Which is another hallmark of the devil. He, he's the opposite or the reflection of the Most High. So he always creates an opposite that he wants to be equal, but really it's not. It's a knockoff. And of course, he worships the sun. You see the coronal sun. So now we've seen two, two or three of these with corona type of, uh, you know, elements to it, right? The sun. And this reminds me of the, the Dracula film and how he had his hair, doesn't it? Just creepy. What's this back here? Oh, there's a serpent on a pole, another serpent on a pole. So, the enemy, is, the false Christ is the serpent on the pole. I don't know if you knew that. But uh, the false Christ is the serpent on the pole. Jesus contrasted himself to the serpent that was on the pole raised up in the wilderness. He contrasted himself to it. He said, just as Moses raised up a serpent in the wilderness, so too the Son of Man will be raised up on a stake. He wasn't comparing himself to a snake. It was a contrast. Now notice, I noticed something else here. It's always the right hand that has this white object on it. What could, what could be the significance of that? The right hand having this object on it. It's in this card and this one. Wow, weird. Now here's a fuller image of the, the first one we looked at. And to me, this looks like thread coming out here and a needle. Maybe this is uh, the uh, camel not being able to get through the eye of a needle. Maybe this image here is a needle. This is a um, sewing needle. But we know that sewing needles and hypo needles are synonymous in a lot of ways, aren't they? More needle-like images here. And again, the right side has the white on it. In this case, it's just the white robe with no white hand. This almost looks like a hypo needle there embedded on his side. And to me, this is just basically, I would say, I would call this image a needle is a needle. That's what I would call this image. A needle is a needle. And the goal is to rid you of free will, the hollow brain, hollow head, through the, the Quetzalcoatl. Wow. Keep watching here. Now, I haven't seen any of these. Whoa. What is that about? So it's like some kind of statuesque. It almost looks like a stormtrooper from Star Wars, doesn't it? There's the dragon right there. He always appears. There's the head of the dragon. See him? Because he rules this world. So of course he's going to put his signature on anything that comes out of an artificial intelligence. Riding the dragon. This might even be mockery. See how the dragon's wrapped around his legs? So this is like mockery of St. Michael, who was standing on the dragon. Instead, the dragon has his clones standing on him. Attack of the clones. All his minions and his armies of evil. And what else do you see in here? I don't really see anything else. I have not seen this one either. Look at this. Unbelievable. These look like cells. Enclosed cells. Let's zoom this out a little bit because I think I'm a little bit in too close. So you guys can see the whole thing. There's obviously a leg coming out of the bottom there. And it's a pink leg. I don't know what that might mean. Chrome of Adreno, maybe. And bathed in, in blood, basically, to feed the chrome. This entity here. Cell brain. Yes, these are the cells. These are the cell line, isn't it? Has to be the cell line. You know what I'm talking about. Maybe Tom can help us out here. The root of all of this, the sacrifice, and given away with its right hand, offered up to the devil. Here he stands. It looks like maybe over here, another slender man type. This is dark stuff, you guys. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I wanted to decode these uh, for those that had asked. 
another uh, abomination here. Almost looks like these things are pointing up toward the heavens. Let's zoom this out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So I'm not just scrolling you guys into insanity. So he wants to elevate himself above the most high. So you see the mountains in the background. They weren't high enough. So now we've got these uh, crucifixion uh, posts of sacrifice soaked at the bottom with blood. That's what this is telling me here. Whoa, is that Mary at the feet of Jesus mourning for him? Wow, with her hood on there and her face. You know, remember, many of the uh, crucifixes were only posts. Uh, we know, or I believe that we know, that Jesus was actually a cross, had a cross member. Why? Now, it's funny because over the years when I was younger, you know, I, I used to study sometimes with the witnesses. They would show up to my door, and I used to think to myself, I wonder if my mom is sending these people around, you know, to keep on me, because these people don't give up, right? They believe they're saving your life by could just badgering you. So when I was in college, you know, I had a I had a Bible study with the, with the witnesses. You know, I just kind of kept in touch because I wanted God in my life in some form, but I knew I didn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. But I thought, oh, maybe the Bible study will do me some good. Well, they teach that this was a post or a pole. But I challenged them because I found a verse in the Bible, in their own Bible, that says that the nails, plural, in his hands. How can there be nails in hands unless the hands are spread apart on a cross member? Now, that does open up the possibility that he could have been crucified from a tree which with cross branches. That would, that, that would fit. But it doesn't mean that he was on a post because if he was on a post, the scripture would have said the nail singular in his hands, right? So this is, you gotta, don't ever take people's word for doctrine. Look it up yourself, but do a thorough job researching and don't just make it fit into your world paradigm and what you want to believe. Research it. And that's what I do here. I research things as thoroughly as possible. And if someone finds or shows evidence that, I, that what I'm saying might not be accurate, I'll retract that. I'll say, you know what? I didn't dig deep enough. But that's what that seems to be saying to me. There's another image. Again, I have not seen these. Gluttony is what this screams out to me. The eye of gluttony. And this is what we've become. Willing sacrifices. And that's why it has these acts like you know, cross members, he's framed in these acts like images because we've basically given ourselves over into this. What is this image here? Another frog like this, this reminds me of the frogs of Revelation. What are they called? Um, you know, these abominations, the unclean spirits bubbling up from hell, bubbling up from the earth here. With this Halloween type of pumpkin head. A yin and a yang. The tar pits bubbling up. What does this say? Oh, look at this even says, Covidi. That almost sounds like Latin. Covidi. Whoa. These are all the souls of the dead. Crying up to heaven. After they have been sacrificed. Wow, that sure does look like a Catholic priest, doesn't it, or something? Maybe. Not a whole lot in this one. This looks like some kind of priest of darkness. There's a few more here. That does definitely does not look like a good image. Obviously, you can make out these wings. This is obviously a fallen angel because there's wings here. And... Some kind of authority over earth. The Popern. Onik Popern or something like that. I'm not even going to try to pronounce those because there could be some kind of spell in there. More like almost like Mother Teresa. Oh, a grieving, grieving mother with no fingers. With no ability to no longer give affection to the one she loved. Fingers were removed through the sacrifice is what this says to me. What is this up here? 
This might have been the person that was sacrificed, like a skull here. This is dark stuff, you guys. This, this makes me uneasy even decoding this. These are like broken ribs, maybe. So let's hurry up and hurry through this. Um, What is this? What could this be? Looks like they're in some kind of opera hall or some kind of presentation booth uh, of some kind. And this is, it looks like a flower, I guess. But what could that mean? What could be the significance of that? The flowering. Oh, the flowering of evil. The birth of evil. The fruit of evil. Flowers come from fruit. And again, you see the blood-soaked ground. There's never any brown ground. It's always red, isn't it? Unbelievable. And of course, we saw this one already. So... I wanted to cover those. A couple of you guys sent this to me. I thought sure that some of the bigger channels would have covered this already, but maybe they missed it. And that's why we're here to cover these things. Now, I wanted to tell you guys something else. We'll be back on here on Monday with a very important show. What I found was a definitive uh, explanation for why the Bible uses wheat and tares to describe God's holy people and the other people that aren't righteous. And here's what I found. And no one has found this yet. Another gift from the Holy Spirit revealing things in the unseen realm. Wheat is iron-based. In other words, the nutrient iron is prominent in wheat. It's like 25%. But weeds or the tares, and I found a, an explanation, a story, a write-up on what weed, what specific weed that they believed that the tare was re actually represented by. And they gave a very good explanation and write-up. We'll read that on Monday. And, and then, so I looked at that weed. There's actually two weeds they identify that could be the possible candidates for the tare. And those weeds are very high in copper content. Unbelievable. So here you have a scientific direct correlation between ancient biblical stories. And now here we are with knowledge increasing in the last days. And you get a perfect metaphor, a perfect parable from top to bottom. Now, there's more to this because copper is toxic to sheep. Their livers cannot handle it. Why do you think that is? Because we are the sheep. And goats are actually are able to process copper and actually need it for survival. The iron and the copper are the two bloodlines. That's what we've been saying since the beginning. Now, I'm going to show you all the evidence. I got all these tabs pulled up. You'll see it's crazy. I found real studies that show the nutritional content of wheat compared to weeds or tares. I'll show you the actual scientific name given to these ancient um, weeds that were probably represented by the tares. We're going to look at their nutritional content. This is unbelievable. Now, this should build your faith a hundredfold because this is literally happening just as God said it would. There will be no denying who Jesus is. Every knee will bow because evidence is coming forth. How could the ancient people who wrote the Bible down under God's guidance have known this? They didn't know what copper, if copper was in food. They didn't have laboratories back then to measure the copper content in a weed. They didn't know what iron was, that it was necessary. And they didn't know that there was iron in wheat. But yet, here we are. End of time. Now, this should encourage you also because what this means is that we are in the last days. We are in the last days. I almost want to show you guys this now because I know you don't want to wait till Monday. Let me just show you a couple, couple of these. We'll have a full discussion on this. Let's see here. Next week. So here's the copper. Copper is cuprum. Darnell ryegrass is the weed that was identified as the possible candidate. And as you can see, its copper content 
is 9.23 milligrams per kilogram compared to wheat, which is 8.17. So it's about 10 to 20% higher copper in the weed. But here's where it gets crazy because there's another weed that was a candidate and it's called Silifaria syracia and its copper content goes all the way up to 22 grams per kilogram, whatever, same measure, milligrams per kilogram, sorry. So it's twice the copper content of the other weed and three times as much as the wheat, two and a half times. The wheat and the tares, iron versus copper. So that's just a little snapshot into what we'll be covering on Monday. Do a full in-depth um, biblical study on that. Many of you have asked me to get more into the Bible, and you're right. We can't just always be looking at decoding films. Uh, bear with us, because this is a pro process, and it is, I believe, guided by the Holy Spirit. So I just go where the flow is, right? Um, and so if God wants me focused on you know, decoding films, I'll do that for a while, but know that we're always going to come back to the Bible, but it's based on what God wants for this channel. Now, we do have, I do have two pre-recorded shows that will be going up over the weekend, about 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 a.m. Uh, Western Pacific Time, and they're already recorded. They'll upload one on Saturday morning, tomorrow morning, and then the other one on Sunday morning. They're going to be, they're not too long. They're like 15, 20 minutes. One of them is 20 minutes. So um, I will see you guys then, hopefully in the chat, if I don't forget. <laughs> um, so let's go into the chat just for a little bit before we get off here, because it is Friday. And see what you guys are up to. <sighs> yes, we live in Wicker Man world, don't we? I have actually a tab pulled up for Wicker, the Wicker Man, and that whole ritual. Burning people in buildings which is what a wicker man is. It was a structure built and they filled it up with people and lit it on fire. That's another ritual that they did that, that has, has had long lasting effects down throughout history. Every chance they get. So dead fish go with the flow unless they're the fish of Jesus, the two fish and the most high in his will. So that's the flow I'm talking about. Yeah, thanks for the congrats on the subs. You know, we've been stuck at 104,000 for two months now. So they're still suppressing this channel. Most people are not getting the notifications. But if you show up every day at the same time, you will always be here. So you don't really need a notification, right? You could just set your alarm and say, okay, Casey's going to be on at 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. we got to find a way to go around their system because we can't rely on their system. This is how they keep channels suppressed. All right, let's keep reading in the chat here. Docs warn not to take iron supplements with whole wheat bread. Now, here's the uh, here's the wheat here, and here's the iron content in wheat. Now, I know some wheat is enriched, but a lot of it isn't. And this Wikipedia article shows the the uh, co the wheat content, uh, the copper content. No, I'm sorry, iron content of wheat to be very high. Where did it go? Again, we'll review all this on Monday. Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, let's go back here. This one says twelve or three point two grams of iron, which is seventeen percent of the daily requirement, and. This one says 25% of iron requirements. So not much copper inside of wheat. All right, let's go back in here. Now, did you guys see anything in those card images that jumped out at you? Wheat coin, Abraham Lincoln, yes. Yes, now you're thinking, wow, great job. So what does that mean spiritually? What is the wheat coin, the wheat penny? You ready? Wheat is the iron mixed with the copper. You see? The mixing of the two bloodlines right there on the wheat penny. Wow, good job. I think that was Lanessa that said that. 
It's always been about the bloodlines. There was something about Lincoln. Uh, we did a lot of research on Lincoln. And without actually being there, obviously, um, you know, the, they worship, the controllers worship Lincoln. They always bring him up. He's the most uh, repeated president in their imagery, and they bring him forward. His legacy will never go away. And remember, he was doing seances in the White House with his wife, right there in the White House. What do you think they were doing? They were communing with demons. That's what they were doing. And my, what the Holy Spirit seems to be telling me, and I don't know this, is that this could have he could have possibly been the very first possessed president. This is when the spirit was able actually to enter, and he had a head wound, right? Which is what happens to the serpent. They get the head wound, and the spirit moves on. They just keep possessing presidents down through the ages. That's my belief. I don't know if that's true or not, but there's a lot of evidence in their obsession with copper goes very close to home to Lincoln as well. They even have video games with Lincoln in it. All right. Yes, most coins are... Um, they're actually copper-based. We, we did a whole breakdown on coins. The core of all coins is copper. They're only coated in zinc. They're like 60 to 80% copper. Some of them 90%. And here's the crazy thing. They used to be, I think it was silver. And the penny used to be 100% copper. Now it's only 2% coating of copper. So they flipped everything. So we went from like silver to copper. And that is the possession. That is the copper serpent overtaking and overwhelming God's seed. Now here's the crazy thing. The word for copper is almost the same as the word for serpent in the Bible. One is nakash and one is nakasheth. They're almost the same word. And it means unclean. So I'm not making all this up. There's something to it. We'll get down to the bottom of it eventually. But whatever we don't figure out, God will reveal to us in the end. Won't he? When all the scrolls are opened. J.C. Penney went to J.C. Penney. The, oh, the name seemed to change, like some kind of uh, Mandela effect or something. Huh? So, let's look that up. Um, coinage. Um, oops. Coinage. Uh, copper content. I should do it. Let's look at some images here. Okay, so this is the one. This is the one to look at here. Go to this site. So, there's actually one that shows the history as well. But as you can see here, all the coins are mostly copper. They're only 25% nickel, 8% nickel, 8% nickel. So, copper has replaced them. This used to be silver. They used to have be inside silver. And that like changed. But uh, there's the truth right there. If you want to go down the coin rabbit hole. And the coin shortage. And how copper doubled in value over the last two years. Because copper is needed for these uh, jive gee whiz base stations. They have a lot of copper inside of them. And these things are going to be everywhere. And are everywhere. And then you'll start to understand that your government does not tell you the truth. Why do you think there was a copper shortage? They were hoarding it. They need it to make wiring. But they didn't tell us a thing about it, did they? We had to figure it out for ourselves. All right. I don't really get into too much into the Mandela. It's another topic we don't really cover here because, again, I believe that that's a topic that is a sabotage topic. So as soon as you start talking about it, it takes over the entire conversation and everybody's talking about that and not what we're talking about now. And I also believe that the whole that whole thing was sent to undermine the integrity of the Bible, to get people to doubt the Bible. Okay? Well, here's the thing. Here's my answer to that. Don't look at the translations of the Bible. Go back to the root text. Go back to the Hebrew and Aramaic. That has not been messed with. 
and then use the concordance to compare what the true meanings of those things are. We all know there are translations of the Bible. But when you go back to the root words like nakash, which means serpent, that only means one thing. Or in if you look at different contexts of how that word was used in other parts of the Bible, you might have find a different meaning that it could possibly be. But don't get hung up on these translations. These are just interpretations of men that, 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 that wrote down these different translations of the Bible. And they're incorrect because men are incorrect. And they did it wrong sometimes when they did these translations. So this is why I try not to get too hung up on like Mandela and all that. Because now the mainstream is talking about it. So obviously it's some kind of operation. Or it could be some signal they're sending out to confuse us about the Bible, get us to doubt the Bible. So uh, that's my answer on that. There's plenty of channels you can go to that focus only on that. And that's what I recommend if you feel like you have to get into a discussion about that. You know, just go to the other channels and you can spend all day on there talking about Mandela. I don't recommend it, but if that's what you feel like you need, um, then that might be the place to go. Oregano oil saved my life. That's good stuff. Now, many of you are having issues with your sinuses. And uh, that's what someone had said to me as well. Okay. Gaslighting, yes. Brass is mostly copper. Yes, brass is 88% copper, as a matter of fact. So anytime you see bronze or... Or maybe it's bronze. Bronze or brass uh, in the Bible. It's pretty much saying copper because it's like majority of it is copper. But you see how they throw you? Even that, even that translation throws you off the trail. If you actually look and hover over the concordance number for copper, it tells you, or bronze, it tells you, it says copper. But unless they say copper, then you miss the whole bloodline thing. You can't put all the puzzle pieces together, the copper versus the iron, the hemocyanin versus the hemoglobin, right? That's what it's all about. And we have creatures on this earth right now as we speak that are of the both of the bloodlines. You have hemoglobin-based creatures that live in warm environments or warmer and then you have colder blooded creatures that have hemocyanin. It's blue. It's literally blue blood. It's so dark blue that it looks purple or black. That would be squids and centipedes and spiders. Cuttlefish. And, and these creatures live in sub-zero temperatures or very cold temperatures. They could survive. So, I'm, you know, the, God's creation is glorious. And we could learn things just by simply looking out into nature. So, all right, you guys. Appreciate everyone coming out. Again, we got a couple short pre-recorded shows over the weekend. So hopefully see all of you guys then. I love each and every one of you. Take care. Be safe and have a great weekend and a great day.